Hi everyone. Just a quick update and I'll, uh, I'll tell my nightmare nurse story I think as well in this video. Um, but first we'll just do the quick update. I know the last time I posted a video I was a bit despondent because I had about seven or eight days of basically up and down about 0.5 of a kilo around the exact same weight. Um, I'm happy to announce that I've now dropped down from that. I've broken through the plateau, so to speak, and I'm down, I think it's about 24 kilos now. I don't know what that is in pounds. I'll um, put it up as a, a little notation if I remember. Um, so yeah, so that's fantastic. Um, when I spoke to the dietitian a couple of days ago in regards to moving on to the next phase of eating, which is sort of the soft general foods, um, she sort of mentioned, which she hadn't mentioned before, that a lot of people don't lose a lot of weight during the sort of pureed stage. Um, I'm not sure what the logic with it is. I don't know whether it's just because there's so little food going in that there's an issue. Um, she hasn't really given me a calorie goal to work towards, which is a little bit hard, I guess, just in terms of, you know, trying to track and trying to be consistent with it and make sure that I'm doing what I need to be doing. I don't want to be under eating, um, but I don't want to be over eating either. So at the moment, I'm sort of working on that old 1200 calorie um, sort of range. And, and I guess I'll see how I go with that. Um, I'm not really focusing on low carb, high carb or anything like that at the moment. Just protein first is my only rule. Um, so focus on the protein, making sure I get that in and then go from there. So yeah, it's, it's going well. Um, I've fit into the pair of like, next pair of jeans that I bought as a sort of goal thing um, because of squeeze but I still made it into them so that's definitely a positive and things are going pretty well at the moment. Um, I'm walking generally 10,000 steps a day up to 15,000 um, not necessarily every day uh, probably but at least five or six days a week I'm trying to make sure I do that it means I take the dogs out on walks that actually bring them back completely exhausted. But that's not a bad thing either because, you know, they are very high energy dogs. So it's good to have that break um, and, and give them that rest. And they seem to enjoy it. So, yeah, it, it's really good. Um, probably the biggest problem is trying to find nice places to go for walks that aren't the same, same place again and again or around our same streets. Um, there's not too many options there's sort of one or two and there might be another couple that i can try and find um but yeah i'm searching a local area for some of those i'm also looking at what gyms i can look at joining um with particular focus on trying to find yoga classes because i think that the toning and the strengthening is what i need to work on um because i can do the cardio with the walking anyway so that's no problems um so yeah, so that's the quick update on where I'm at and how things are going. Um, all in all, it's really good and I'm pretty happy with it. Now, let me tell you the story of my nightmare nurse. Now, I can't fault the Wesley Hospital where I had my surgery and pre-op and post-op. Um, it was really good. Most of the nurses there were utterly fantastic. They looked after me the way that only nurses can and you know um, as much as I appreciate doctors nurses are without a doubt the backbone of the hospital but nurses like my nightmare nurse are a reason why people don't like going to hospitals now this happened the first night after my surgery so I finished the surgery with the nose drain, um, so the nasal drain down into the stomach to drain the blood um, from there, and then also one in my side. And the one in my side didn't bother me. I've had one similar to that before when I had the ovary out. And, you know, it's just a little pouch you need to remember to take with you when you go to the toilet and not leave strapped to bed so you don't accidentally rip it out. Not that I've ever done that. Um, but yeah, it, it's not a difficult thing. The nose drain, however, oh my God, I never want to experience that again. It's the most uncomfortable situation and sensation in the entire world. It feels like you've constantly got something stuck down the back of your throat, which I mean, I guess literally you do, um, but you can just feel it sitting there and it's just gross. 
but anyway for some reason this nasal drain So the tube from my nose and the clip that went into the bag that catches the fluids that come out, for want of a better word, um, it just didn't quite connect properly. And it had come loose once already during the day. And, and that was fine. Like, they fixed it up and there was no leakage or anything along those lines. Um, but it, it was all good. And it was just something that I needed to keep a watch of and the nurses needed to keep watch. So this nurse starts her shift and is told everything about me. I'm on metformin, but not for diabetes. It's only for polycystic ovarian syndrome. Um, that I've had the gastric bypass and, and everything with that. And it was all sort of fairly okay. She was a bit standoffish, but often the night nurses are, I think. Um, I don't know if they just want to sort of get into it because they know that it's going to be a busy night because there's fewer of them on. It's fine. Like, it doesn't usually affect me too much because, you know, they're, they're still pleasant enough. And she was pleasant enough the first time that I met her. Um, but then there was a few different things that happened. Um, first was the nasal drip and the connector to the, um, the bag. It came loose in the middle of the night. And it leaked. And it leaked everywhere, all over the bed and all over me. Um, and when she came, like I called the nurse and, and she was sort of like, oh, in this big tiz about it. And, you know, we, we sort of fixed it up and that was fine. And I said to her, look, while we're doing this, I may as well get up and go to the toilet because I know that I'm going to need to before too long anyway. It'll give me a chance to change. It'll give her a chance to do the sheets and, and everything will be fine. What she did instead was dress me with the new gown while I was still in the bed covered with blood. And then she proceeded to tell me to roll to one side because she wanted to clean the bed up before I could get up. So she rolled me to one side and then it was incredibly painful. Like I'd only just had surgery hours earlier and, you know, everything was still sore. I still had the green button for the morphine pain relief. 
um, the nose thing was just driving me insane. The side was hurting at that point. Everything was a bit sore at that point. So moving from side to side was agony. It would have been far better for me to get out of the bed, regardless of whether I needed to get up to go to the toilet. Um, but yeah, so she proceeded to roll me to one side and then roll me to the other side. And she changed the sheets underneath me. And I said, like, seriously, I can just get out of bed and go to the toilet. And she looked at me and said, well, why didn't you say that earlier? And I was just like, I did. It was literally the first thing that I said to you when you came into the room. And she just completely dismissed the fact that I'd said it. And then proceeded to tell every nurse after that that I was a silly billy because, you know, I didn't get out of bed when I could have. And that I told her after it was too late to try this thing. And it left me angry and I was sore and... I was just so frustrated with her for not listening to me in the first place. But the thing is, if that was all there was, it would have been okay. Like, yeah, it's a bit of a sucky situation, but, you know, things happen. But there was more. The, the lady in the bed next to me at one point didn't have her oxygen prongs in. And the nurse yelled at her for it and told her that she was silly for taking them out because she needs to keep them in because she'd only just had surgery. And the girl said to her, well, you took them out and you told me not to put them back, not to worry about putting them back in yet. And she was just like, well, no, I would never say that. You need to keep your oxygen prongs in. Don't be stupid. But then when I was finished getting dressed and I went back to the bed and she helped me get everything set back up on the bed, she walked off without putting my oxygen prongs in. And I called her back and I said, oh, can you help me get these on? Because I couldn't reach them because they were behind me on the bed, sort of out of reach. And she said, oh, sorry, I almost forgot. And so she said, sorry, I, I forgot. And I'm sitting there thinking, you just told the lady next to you that you never forget that sort of thing and that it's incredibly important for them to be in and how dare she not do it when you've just done that exact same thing to me. So you're making patience all over the place feel like they're idiots for you not listening. And then the next morning she came in with the um, finger test for diabetes. And I sort of said to her, well, why are you doing this? I don't check my blood. She's like, you never check your blood. What's going wrong with you? Why don't you do that? And I said, because I don't need to. I'm fine. I'm not diabetic. She's like, well, why are you on metformin then? And I, I just sat there and went, because of my polycystic ovarian syndrome. You were told that last night and it's in the chart. So between those two things... Surely you would remember that, you know, this is the situation. And this was a private hospital. And in these private hospitals, they don't have that many patients. Like, I can understand a public hospital having those sorts of issues because, you know, you might have two or three nurses for 10 or 20 patients. I don't know the exact ratios, but just from my experience of being in public hospitals, it does seem to be very highly understaffed most of the time, especially at night. Like I said, the night nurses, I think, get the raw end of the stick. But in this private hospital, she was assigned five beds. That was it. Like... Sorry for the change lighting and hopefully the car running doesn't cause too many problems. Um, my fun phone decided that it's too hot. It's bloody winter, so I don't know how I'm going to be able to record in summer if it gets too hot at the moment. It's car running with the air conditioning on at the moment. Hopefully that'll help and I won't just get cut off. It would be nice if it would at least warn you before it does it, but no, it just instantly stops the video. Um, anyway, so... Yeah, this, this nurse was just, she didn't read the charts. She only had a handful of patients that she needed to listen to and she didn't listen to them properly. She made multiple people feel like they were like this big, which, you know, is not something that a nurse should do. A nurse should be there to care and to look after people. And I know sometimes that means tough love and I know it doesn't necessarily mean being overly friendly or anything like that, but we're talking basic care she was getting wrong. Basic care that she was abusing people over who, you know, were in a vulnerable situation. Both me and the person in the bed next to me had had surgery that day 
it wasn't like we were a week out and refusing to get out of bed and being pains in the asses for some reason or anything like that. She had no reason to be rude to us. She had no reason to be condescending and she just needed to listen a little bit harder. I don't know, maybe she was hearing impaired or something and that was part of the problem. But if that was the case, that should be explained to the patients at the beginning so that we could take extra steps because, you know, we've got tubes down our throat. We've just had surgery. We're most of the time doped up on, you know, morphine or whatever the hell it is they put into the green button. And it's not like we are going to be able to be loud and make our voices heard at a proper volume because you know you are sick you are in hospital you have had surgery your body is weak at that point you don't have a loud voice to be able to scream and say listen to me um so yeah it it was just that was the one sour note that i have about my entire stay the surgery went great the rest of the nurses were fantastic but this one nurse i will never forget the way she made me feel and the way that how angry I was with the way she spoke to the lady in the bed next to me as well over something that she did to me literally seconds later um, so yeah I'm sure there was more to that story as well I did post it on Facebook um, I'll see if I can find the post and maybe throw it in the link down below so you can read through my next day thoughts because uh, the next day I did get quite um, irate on Facebook about it but like I said, I don't take it out on nurses in general. In general, I love the nurses that I know in my life. And, you know, I love the nurses that I've had at just about every hospital, whether they're understaffed or not. You know, they, they take the time when they need to. Um, you know, and I saw it with mum when she had something happen with her that required a lot of care. You know, the nurses were fantastic while she was in intensive care. They were fantastic, you know, while she was in critical situation. As soon as she stopped being critical, the nurses probably gave a little bit less attention to her, but that's the way it should be. You want the people with the most urgent needs to be getting the most urgent care. Um, so you can understand all of that. And, you know, I love nurses. I just hate this particular one and would be glad to never have the misfortune of being treated by her again. One thing I will mention, um, which was mentioned to me, she was an agency nurse, so she wasn't in the regular staff of the Wesley. So I will say that if you go there for some reason, if you are staying there, you probably won't have the misfortune of meeting her. The flip side to this, of course, the negative is that you know, it's highly likely you could be in any hospital in Brisbane and she randomly turns up for your shift, which is slightly terrifying. Um, you know, with her basic lack of compassion, bedside manner, and ability to read the charts and remember what she was told about patients, I honestly don't think she should be a nurse. I don't think she is fit to be a nurse. Um, the one criticism I will have of the Wesley is that I made a complaint to the nurses the following morning. I asked to see the nursing unit manager and never got, she never came to see me. Um, I was told that my complaint was passed across to her though. I also lodged a complaint online and I've not heard anything about any of those complaints, um, which is concerning because it tells me that they are more concerned with just pushing people through than really worrying about whether or not they're getting the right care. Um, maybe they did do something about it, but you know there was nothing fed back to me to sort of say hey we've heard your concern and we're highly worried about it and we're looking into it no one's ever asked me for more information nothing you know I think it was almost treated as if I was being a bit over the top with it and I don't think I was not with the way she treated me and not with the way that she went through and like I said every nurse that she spoke to um, about my situation as she did handovers and all that sort of stuff she basically called me a mink and poop each time and that was frustrating and it really pissed me off when I was there. But anyway, that was my one little blip, my one nightmare nurse. Um, I've got plenty of medical horror stories though if you ever want to hear all of them. Um, let me know in the comments if you know you want to hear about 
some of the fun that I went through when we were still trying to conceive the second time um, because I have some fun stuff that we went through uh, there's a lot of invasive tests that you get and some interesting stuff happened in some of them um, so yeah I could do a little video of my top five uh, medical uh, issues if you needed to or if you were interested in that um, like I said let me know down in the comments below otherwise I will end this video here um, I'm probably going to record another couple just to talk about um, some other stuff but yeah if you uh, want to get all the stuff I try and share on Facebook if you follow me over there um, but often I forget when I upload a video to share it over there so the best way to make sure you're going to get my videos is to subscribe and to hit the notification bell um, I know that it's a bit hit and miss as to whether or not you'll actually get it, but that is going to be the best way to try to make sure that you see it if you're interested in hearing more. Anyway, I will uh, sign off there. Thank you very much for listening and I'll see you later. Bye.